Hello, everybody. This is the Peaceful Whisper. I hope you're doing well. Today, I will be giving you a little art history lesson. And the subject of this lesson will be the life and works of Hilma of Klint. Hilma of Klint. Born on October twenty sixth, eighteen sixty two, in Karlberg Palace in Stockholm, Sweden. She was an artist and mystic whose paintings are considered among the first abstract works known in Western art history. Today, I will be sharing Some of her early sketchbooks in which she drew symbols, signs, and messages she and four other women called The Five received in meditations and seances. And this will make a little more sense as you flip through these with me. But this is a little explanation about these sketchbooks and the background behind them before we continue with the rest of Hilma's story. Hilma of Klint turned away from the visible and physical world to embrace a spiritual reality in both her life and work. In 1896, together with Anna Castle, Cornelia Cederberg, Singrid Hedman, and Matilda Nielsen, Hilma left the Edelweiss Society a group which combined Christian concepts with ideas of theosophy and spiritualism. The all-female group which met every Friday in Stockholm to practice group meditations and seances believed they could channel mystic beings whom they called the High Masters with names such as Amalio, Anada, 
and Gregor. In trance-like states, the women transcribed the messages from these high masters via automatic writings and drawings into a series of shared sketchbooks, resulting in a kaleidoscope of collective and raw work that is firmly rooted in the spiritual realm. Over the course of the group's existence, up until 1908, they filled such sketchbooks, three of which have been reproduced in facsimile form for the first time and presented in this edition. The set includes sketchbook numbers two, six, and 13, dating from October 1896 to January 1906 and provides a rare look into the early influential years of Clint's artistic and spiritual practice. of her time, Hilma of Clint created hundreds of enigmatic paintings where the invisible became the visible. Unseen for many years, her work has now vindicated her as one of the pioneers of abstract art. It was 1935, and Russian painter Vasily Kandinsky wrote a letter to his New York gallery owner, where he claimed the authorship of his first abstract painting, a piece painted in 1911. Without a doubt, it is the first abstract painting in the world, he said. It is, in other words, a historical painting, said the letter. Nonetheless, by 1906, Hilma had already been painting abstract compositions in which line, color, and geometrical shapes had been her main subjects. However, her story and her contribution to abstract art remained unknown until the 1980s when an exhibition taking place at the Los Angeles County Museum of Art finally vindicated her role. Why doesn't her name resonate when we think of this art movement? What happened 
that kept her prolific production unknown. Unlike Mondrian, Malevich, or Kandinsky's works. From an early age, Hilma lived a comfortable life. She had access to scientific knowledge through the extensive library of her father, who was an occasional violin player and mathematician. In 1880, she attended Stockholm's Technical Institute, where she studied portrait painting. In the same year, unfortunately, her younger sister, Hermina, died at the age of 10. This tragic event awakened her spiritual side and got her interested in spiritism in a quest to find answers to her questions. In the 19th century, this religious movement was at its peak and many believed in the human ability to communicate with the afterlife. In 1882, she began her painting studies at Stockholm's Royal Academy of Fine Arts and spent five years studying drawing and portrait and landscape painting. The Swedish Royal Academy was one of the few places in Europe where women were allowed to study. Her generation was one of the first to receive an academic education. Like many other contemporaries, Hilma of Klint did not stop looking for spiritual knowledge. Hers was an exciting era. Scientific discoveries such as radio waves or x-rays destroyed many of the conventional beliefs and opened the doors to the possibility of exploring new realities beyond the five senses. It was 1896 and Hilma and four other female artists created an esoteric group called Friday Club or The Five. The group was the seed of her abstract painting. The women got together every Friday and organized seances, sessions including the study of the New Testament, meditation exercises, prayer, and spiritism. They recorded the messages received from the afterlife and practice experimental automatic writing and drawing. During these sessions, Hilma and her companions said to establish contact with spiritual beings called 
the high masters. In 1906, 10 years after the group started, Hilma received a special commission. In her diary, she explained that a spirit called Amalio gave her an assignment to create paintings for the temple. Amalio offered me a job and I accepted immediately she wrote in her notebook. Thus, Hilma started painting the most extensive work of her life, 193 paintings completed over two periods until 1915. In the first period, which lasted until 1908, she painted 111 of the pictures. The ruthless pace as at which she worked is described in her diaries. The pictures were painted directly through me, without any preliminary drawings, and with great force. I had no idea what the paintings were supposed to depict. Nevertheless, I worked swiftly and surely without changing a single brush stroke. Hilma was convinced that reality was not limited to the physical world and that there existed another world as real and truthful as the material one. Unlike other abstract artists, Hilma did not want to dissolve reality, but to make visible what is invisible and show everything that exists beyond the physical world we are accustomed to. She used letters, pastel colors, lines, and spirals, and various geometric shapes, such as concentric circles, ellipses, and triangles to achieve this. Her symbology was also very rich, and different motifs are repeated in her work. Seashells, snakes, lilies, rose crosses, swans, and letters. The letter U, for example, meant spirit, and W symbolized matter. She also used the color blue to represent femininity and yellow for masculinity. The artist was interested in representing duality in other concepts, macrocosms and microcosms, 
light and darkness, the origin and the end of the world. In 1908, Rudolf Steiner, leader of the German Anthroposophical Society, visited Offklint's studio where he saw the paintings for the temple. His reaction was unexpected, and he advised her not to show the paintings for 50 years. Perhaps her most spectacular paintings are known as the ten largest. Ten large pieces where Hilma wished to depict life phases from childhood to old age through abstract compositions. In 1908, Hilma took a four-year break to look after her mother, who had become blind. In 1912, she picked up her paintings for the temple again and completed them in 1915. A year later, she painted the Parsifal series. And in 1917, the Adam series. In 1944, Hilma Af Klint died in a traffic accident and left behind more than 1,300 abstract artworks, thousands of drawings in her sketchbooks, and a promise from her heir. Her work was not to be shown until at least 20 years had passed since her death. The artist was afraid that the people of that generation would not understand her abstract work. Her full artistic production remained unseen until 1986 when it was exhibited in a museum for the first time. This mark the discovery of one of abstract arts pioneers. Hope you found this lesson informative.